Halakia. I'm Philip John Nymark, the founder of the IFA Foundations of North and Latin America, and welcome to the IFA blog. You've all heard the expression that everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Well, in IFA, we have a similar situation, and that is that everybody wants to be self-empowered, but nobody wants to do the work necessary to get there. Ifa, almost exclusively among world religions and philosophies, teaches self-empowerment as a natural observation and result of the creation of the creator or creative force that envisioned and put into place this universe. Whether that force be he, she, or it is rather inconsequential. What is important is how it all works. And it works through the empowerment of individuals, of species, of everything. Most of the species, living species, on this planet, in this part of our universe, are born with a instinct for survival. In other words, they've been programmed with those necessary attributes to see that they survive as well as possible. Uh, baby deer automatically runs from smoke and a baby monkey simply doesn't fall out of the tree. Um, a baby turtle born in the sand immediately from the egg heads towards the ocean is only possible survival. Nobody taught them this. They were born and created with this program. We as humans apparently are a different part of that experiment or construct because we have no instinct for survival. Don't confuse that, by the way, with a desire to survive. We don't have any preordained knowledge. A baby seeing a pretty flame puts their hand into it and burns themselves. <laughs> and if they survive, they learn. They take that information and they say, not a good idea <laughs> to touch everything that's pretty. We were also designed or, to learn from those of us who were fortunate enough to be exposed to older people or the wise men and women of our community who had already discovered great truths and that we didn't have to burn our hands in the process of acquiring and integrating into our own energy matrix. But the real factor which people fail to understand is the difference between information and wisdom. Information is a series of facts, a series of observations, a series of repetitive uh, possibilities. But wisdom is the inherent knowledge of knowing when to apply them, when they are right contextually, and always taking the long-term and inclusive view of that information. That's the hard part. It's the hard part because when we begin to act in accordance with acquiring first the information and second the wisdom, we will absolutely, time and time again, find ourselves confronted with situations where the short-term response would be a great deal easier than dealing with that truth and that long-term implication. The person, family member, friend, lover, boss, whatever, that expresses a thought or behavior pattern for instance, that is antithetical to good character or good behavior can't be ignored simply because you're afraid of confrontation. Cannot be avoided simply because it's not in your best interest, perhaps, to create what might be an emotionally strident situation. But every time you do that, every time you turn away from that kind of a situation, 
every time you take the easy path, which is not necessarily agreeing, which would be the worst of all possible choices, but just kind of passing it over, ignoring it, pretending it didn't exist, hoping it goes away, while maintaining the relationship with that person as if what they had said or done was correct, costs you dearly. There's no way of getting around that. You pay a price, and the price you pay is that by ignoring improper values or behavior in others, you seriously impact the validity, the strength, and the power of your own values and your own personal empowerment. You see, you can't be empowered without wisdom. People get rid of the im and use the power. Do they think that if they surround themselves with enough instruments or they get enough money or they're physically so, you know, the prowess is so amazing or whatever, that they don't have to deal, you know, with the normal things, that they're kind of entitled now to a good life. That isn't the case at all. Because they're operating on a short-term mentality fix that will invariably, ultimately, absolutely lead to a fork in the road, a detour in their way, life and destiny, a diminution of their relationships and their work and their accomplishments and their growth and their loving relationships and their health because they ignored the instructions of the universe, the way that this was all created. They took the easy way that they didn't have to call other people on their stuff. They didn't have to call themselves on their stuff. Because when they do, or if they did, they'd feel badly. The person might not like them. They might not even be able to substantiate or continue their own flawed, but nevertheless genuine vision of themselves. And yet without that examination, without that constant discipline, without that adherence and love respect for and understanding the awesome power of truth, good character, and long-term implications, no self-empowerment is possible. So, everybody wants to go to heaven and nobody wants to die. Well, everybody wants to be self-empowered. But nobody wants to do the work, feel the short-term pain, which is often necessary, to make the long-term work. Think about the time that you allowed your child, perhaps, to cry themselves to sleep. After weeks or months of their not wanting you to go out of the room, where their behavior was disempowering themselves, where they needed you there, until they fell asleep in order to feel safe. Think of how you felt. I remember holding my first wife on the stairs of our home <laughs> to restrain her from going into my older son's bedroom because of the screaming and crying that was going on when we finally decided it was time for him to be able to put himself to sleep. But you know what? The second night, it was half the time. The third night, a couple of minutes. And by the fourth night, it was all over. And by doing that which was difficult, by doing that which we felt badly, we felt pain. Nobody wants to see the child hurt or afraid. But we empowered that child. The first of thousands of lessons of getting through our own fear, our own pain, our own anxiety, our own insecurity, and becoming worthwhile human beings. That's what you have to work on. Do the work, if it will get you there. Until next time, love and blessings.